This is the Scans 3D Scanner, and it allows you to use your Scan Sweep LiDAR scanner as a full 3D scanner. The only downside is you've got to build it yourself, because this week we're introducing the Scan Sweep 3D Scanner Kit, and it comes with everything you need to take your Scan Sweep and turn it into a fully self contained scanner. Even though the 3D scanner kit comes with everything you need, and it's quite a bit cheaper than it would be if it came pre-assembled, I've been told that the assembly process can be a little bit confusing. In fact, in the assembly guide, they say, this kit is for those who enjoy DIY projects, and it will require a bit of tinkering to get the results you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one together on camera today, and that way we can run into any of the gotchas that you might encounter and you can avoid them when you put yours together at home. There are a few things that we should go over before we get started here. First of all, you'll notice that there is no scant sweep included in the kit. You'll have to purchase the unit separately, or if you already have one, you can build it into the kit. Secondly, because it's a DIY kit, we won't be accepting any returns on these units because chances are they've already been modified and then we won't be able to do anything with those parts. Third, we can't offer support directly on this kit, but you can go to the community forums at community.scans.io slash C slash 3D scanner and join the forum there where everybody else is putting these together for tips and tricks on how you can get your unit to work. So looking at the assembly guide, the first step is to install the ball bearings in this cover that this other part is supposed to ride on top of. Now, the assembly guide does mention that we should go through and clean up some of these 3D printed parts, but I've actually looked at them and they don't look that bad. So I'm gonna forge ahead and then clean up anything that I have to kind of as we go. So that's step one complete. We've uh, put all of the bearings in this chase right here so that this moves smoothly on top of it. Uh, as far as gotchas, I would say step one is pretty straightforward. It is a little frustrating to get in there with a little tiny hex key and um, do all of these screws up because there aren't access points on the opposite side to get a wrench through. So I started by trying to use this big fancy T-handled wrench. In the end, it's better to use one of these little Allen keys. So now we're gonna move on to step two, which is to assemble the limit switch. So that's step two complete. We have a limit switch installed in the base unit here. You can see it can get hit by the sled that rides on top. Um, no real gotchas in step two, it went pretty smoothly. So let's move on to step three, which is to install the stepper motor. That's step three complete, and we have our stepper motor mounted in the base here. And uh, no gotchas on this step, I'd say it went pretty smoothly. Um, just a general word of warning, don't over tighten any of the screws or bolts in this project, uh, especially anything that's self tapping, because um, you'll strip the threads right out of the relatively soft ABS plastic. So let's move on to step four, which is to assemble the Adafruit motor hat. With step four complete, the stepper motor hat has been all soldered together with all of the headers that you need. The one thing I'll mention here is that these screw terminals are going to face in because they'll sit against the edge of the inside of the enclosure. So you're gonna turn those around from the way that you would normally mount them. Also, pay attention to the instructions where they say to connect female jumper cables to these headers before soldering them in place to make sure that you have enough space to connect jumper wires later. If you seat them all the way down to the board, you may not be able to get your jumper cables on there. Also, these are bus bars, so they're not labeled, so I can't give you numbers for where to place these components, but uh, if you count carefully from the edge in the photo, all of their placement is correct in the photo, so you'd be able to count those headers, figure out where to place these. And uh, finally, on this one, I can tell you that it spans the gap uh, with the first pin being the transmit pin labeled TXD, and the last pin being, I believe, number 17, it looks like. And so that's where that one's gonna go. And it's gonna sit pretty proud of the board so that you can get 
the jumper wires in over the back of this connector. So you may want to solder it from the top instead of from the bottom. So let's move on to step five, which is to assemble the female micro USB cable. Step five is complete and we have this female USB cable hooked in here with this fancy 3D printed uh, spacer. And the next step is going to involve gluing the spirit level into place on the 3D printed base. Now I know that this step involves super glue, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use some of this NCF Quick, which is a uh, super glue accelerant. So that'll help me cure the glue in like a second so I don't have to sit around and wait for glue to dry. That was step six and that went pretty smoothly. We have our bubble level installed. Um, make sure you do this on a level surface. Of course, you can use the included bubble level to figure out if the surface is level. You just want to do it on a level surface so that once the level is installed in here, you can scoot it around a little bit and make sure that it's indicating the right level before you glue it in place. Also, uh, in the pictures in the assembly guide, it shows the side of this being exposed. Um, that's only because they're using a broken 3D print, it looks like, or an older version. Um, you'll only be able to see the very back of the bubble level because you're going to be putting it in through the front here and pushing it down with a screwdriver. So let's move on to step number seven, which is to install the Raspberry Pi assembly. Now that step seven is complete, the Raspberry Pi assembly is screwed into the case here. Again, be careful not to over tighten these screws because they will strip out. All right, so we're gonna move on to step eight, which is to finally install the 90 degree scanner bracket. And for this section, we're going to need a scant sweep. Step eight is complete and the unit is looking pretty much finished. We have the uh, 90 degree angle connected to the base. We have the scant sweep connected to that, and we have our USB cable running through the bottom here and connecting to the Raspberry Pi. Um, one stupid mistake that I made that you don't have to make is to feed the small end of this USB cable up through the hole. Don't try to get the big end down through the hole um, because that is a pain. So just make sure to remember that. Uh, you'll probably figure that out on your own. Step nine is gonna be to assemble the battery holder. So let's move on to that step. Step nine is complete, and so we have our battery pack in the base unit here. Um, the soldering iron trick that they show for installing the quarter 20 nut in the bottom of the base works really well. And uh, uh, one thing I would watch out for is that in my kit, they actually gave me a small piece of double-sided tape uh, in a baggie, which I've been using in pieces for everywhere that they say you need double-sided tape. So make sure to ration that out so that uh, you don't use it all on one part and then you don't have any for later. All right, so now we're gonna move on to step 10, which is to install the nine axis IMU. Step number 10 is complete and we have our IMU installed into the cover. And now we're just gonna move on to step number 11, which is the final step to install the battery onto the scanner. And that's it. We've completed our Scants 3D scanner kit and everything moves, got full range of motion, 180 degrees. All of the USB cables are connected from the battery pack up to the scanner unit and everything seems to be in working order. So after putting this kit together, I discovered that there were a few tools that they don't mention in the guide that you'll probably wanna have on hand. Um, so I'm gonna go through right now and just tell you all the tools I ended up using in putting this together. Of course, there was the soldering iron, so make sure you have a soldering iron and some solder. If it has an adjustable temperature, that helps, but you don't need it. I also used a hobby knife for clearing out some of the uh, gunk that's left in the 3D prints. I used a pair of scissors for cutting the double-sided tape. You'll want a very small Phillips head screwdriver with a thin shaft so that you can work in those small spaces and also for tightening the screws on all of the screw terminals. Also some wire strippers. I'm using big fancy automatic wire strippers, but any set of wire strippers will do. 
Uh, you'll need some calipers or a ruler will work. This is really just to measure wire. There are a lot of places in the guide where they want you to cut wire to a certain uh, length or they want you to make a mark at a certain length. So I used calipers because they're handy, but uh, a ruler will work just as well. And then finally, a pencil for making some marks as you go. And I think if you have all of these things and a soldering iron, then you should be fine putting this together. So if you'd like to build your very own 3D scanner, pick up the Scant Sweep and the Scant's 3D Scanner Kit today. Quite a bit need uh, a sweep, a sweep, a scant sweep. We're mm, would be if you had bought it pre forums at the internet. <laughs>